In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look at the weather around the world, really on screen here, but we do have some tropical concerns, even off the southeast coast. Today's models, the GFS and the European model, show somewhat of a spin-up type storm off the southeast. Now, this doesn't guarantee that the east coast would get hit. This obviously could go out to sea, and really, the steering would suggest that that's maybe more likely at least 50 50 something like that so uh it's something that needs to be monitored and we're going to be talking about that today alongside the weather around the nation and that massive cool down in the eastern and central states coming up for the beginning of august which i cannot wait for it's going to bring fall like temperatures pretty major arctic blast for this time of year so we'll talk more about that in just a little bit so we know that the uh eastern Caribbean is pretty active, or sorry, the Eastern Pacific is very active. We've been discussing that for a few days, uh, but it's a Southeast area that's interesting. This is by August 1st, actually, and what happens is we see a cold front with that cool down pushes offshore, and what we end up seeing is this area of precipitation and overall storminess set up here, and these are usually very, very susceptible to seeing tropical activity. And we're going to watch this area right here because it's going to want to kind of spin up and start getting pretty active in there. So let's watch this play out. We see it sit around and then we start to see maybe some development getting going here. Clearly a more concise storm. The rest of the front pushes out the sea. We see that way out here. But we do see this area is kind of all by itself now. So it becomes a more independent system. And then it eventually pushes off and up towards eastern Canada, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland area. Uh, hopefully as a more minor storm. But that is our biggest tropical concern, at least in the Atlantic, as of today. So I, I felt like mentioning that. We'll look at the European model and we'll see it on there as well. But we're going to dive into that cold air, uh, which again is coming very soon as well. Let's take a look at things. And as you can see, this is starting out for today. And we do have areas of storms around. In particular, we see some of the kind of lower mid-Atlantic areas seeing some thunderstorm activity today. I was doing my lawn work and I got rained on. And that's always the worst. When you are you look at the radar and it's clear, you get the lawnmower out, you're halfway done with it, and then it starts to rain because you're kind of in a tricky situation. I pushed through, you know, battled the rain, and I won. I ended up getting it all done. So it, was, it wasn't easy, though, I'll say that. We do see that some of the Midwest and Ohio Valley has similar storms ongoing from Missouri eastward all the way through like West Virginia and Pennsylvania, everywhere in between as well. We can see up in the Northeast, New York and a lot of New England seeing some of that activity as well as the Northern Plains and Upper Midwest. Let's take a look at tomorrow though for Monday on the 28th and things get a little bit quieter in the East. We do see areas like Montana and North Dakota seeing some thunderstorms, still some of the Southeast and Ohio Valley seeing some thunderstorm activity there for tomorrow, but much quieter, a lot less to talk about. Tuesday on the 29th here, we see that activity starts to pick back up for the southeast in particular, as well as the kind of Rocky Mountain range. We're seeing storms just to the east of them, which is a very common occurrence. Midwest and Great Lakes seeing some thunderstorm activity as well. We're going to keep this going, and this is right around when that cold front starts to develop. We call this the squeeze, at least that's what we've been calling it, where this warm air is pushing northward, as it always does in the summertime. But we have a very intense Arctic blast moving down, and this is why you see, uh, or rarely see, cool downs like this in the summertime, because that push from the south, pushing that warm and humid air in, is very intense. It's at its peak intensity this time of year. So it takes a really intense Arctic air mass to be able to push that back towards the Gulf. And we are seeing that happen here. But you can imagine that battle of, of two different air masses pushing directly at each other. You can imagine that is a tremendous force there. And this creates lift. It forces the air upward where those two air masses meet. And that is able to really, really intensify and develop these thunderstorms. And that's why we see a ton of activity in that area for the day on Wednesday the 30th. I mean, we even see a lot of activity further southward, like the deep south and southeast. Thursday here on the 31st, it's the same thing. We're just seeing it drop further southward because, again, that cooler air is going to win out in this instance. So we are going to see this progressively move further and further southward. But another stormy day here for these areas, jet stream ridging over the west and now 
beginning to trough in the east. Looking towards Friday on the 1st, we could see this pushing even further southward. Now mostly the deep south dealing with these thunderstorms. And we could see some activity there off the mid-Atlantic, maybe, for Friday on the 1st of August. Eventually pushing out the sea by Saturday on the 2nd. Still a lot of thunderstorms, though, for the deeper southeast and even areas of the northeastern gulf, as well as offshore of the southeast. Don't be surprised if we maybe see some other opportunities for tropical development here. We know that these areas are generally favorable, and when we see these frontal boundaries and storm systems move over this area, it doesn't take a lot for them to get tropical components to them and become a tropical system. So we're going to be monitoring that very closely Sunday the 3rd here, I mean, look at the intensity. We see maybe more development off the southeast here impacting states like South Carolina and North Carolina with very heavy rainfall. By Monday on the 4th, still a lot of activity sitting in those similar areas. The Midwest getting going as well as the Northern Rockies. Tuesday on the 5th, it's still the same areas. Wednesday on the 6th, a lot of that southeast and deep south is just continuing to see activity. Thursday on the 7th of August, we do see maybe a little bit of deepening low pressure for the third time with this area of storms. Again, a similar area, South Carolina, North Carolina, just offshore. As we keep going towards Friday here on the 8th, a lot of that activity pushes towards the north, more offshore of southern New England or the mid-Atlantic there. We see another push of thunderstorms through areas of the south central states in the Midwest here. And that's Friday on the 8th, Saturday on the 9th. There's some activity in the east, but it's a little bit more marginal and scattered about. And that's the end of the model run here by the 11th. So pretty active, especially with a lot of that activity just sitting in here. And when we look at the total precipitation, we can see a huge surge that has taken place for the southeast area, where now they expect pretty far above average precipitation if these effects do in fact take place. I mean, look at this giant above average area for the southeast Really the deep south, southeast, and even into the mid-Atlantic there. So well, southern New England getting the above average precipitation. Still, and really on theme for this summer, we still have this north central area dealing with above average precipitation, which they've had since, you know, probably early July. Uh, really, really been a trend there. The temperatures over the last three days look like this. We've had a heat wave. We're still going to continue to see it here for a little bit longer cooler temperatures in the west but this is about to flip entirely so let's look at the upcoming temperatures and for today it looks very similar monday as well or yeah monday on the 28th very similar to today on sunday tuesday hasn't changed too much except we see a tremendous warming trend out west so much above much further above normal temperatures and we do see this cooler air beginning to intrude starting with the north central states getting much cooler conditions compared to what's typical Wednesday on the 30th that that effect kind of builds further Thursday on the 31st we see it moving in and then by Friday on the first here we see it is mostly taken over for the central and eastern states with the exception of the very far south south areas there but by Saturday the second it's pushed even further south even some of Florida is below normal as far as temperatures but some of these hot spots or I guess you know cool spots if you will the furthest below normal areas like the mid-Atlantic and southeast, the plains here, these areas are 10 to 15 degrees below normal. That is substantial and that will bring fall-like conditions if we do in fact see this for the high temperatures. We're talking low 80s for these more southern areas, low 80s to even 70s in the more uh, mid areas and for further north areas, far, far north areas, you might even be seeing some upper 60s or lower 70s really, really cool for this time of year and that continues for the third fourth fifth but look out west we're cooling out there that might spell the end of this we overall see the warmth begin to come back in the east and then this ensemble model just gets kind of crazy we've talked about this over the past few days but these ensemble models are the mean average of many different models put together and when they spread out and become more uncertain you're taking the mean average of that and you end up getting an average outlook. So these are only usually useful, you know, maybe through 10 days like this. This is the 10 day mark and it's a lot more detailed. We can kind of figure out the pattern that it's trying to portray, but then after that, it all kind of falls apart. Now, with all that being said, that's it for this video, guys. So be sure to subscribe. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.